Christina Canavan. I'm here with Isabella. Isabella, I'll let you do a quick introduction of yourself. Sure. Um, yeah, my name is Isabella Tadaro, and I lead carbon measurement at Climate Neutral, which is a nonprofit that certifies companies' claims of carbon neutrality. Um, and I work mostly on our software product that companies use to measure carbon emissions and then the program and experience and strategy that kind of sits around that software tool. That is very cool. So um, when you, when you, I was trying to wrap my head around all of what you were just saying. So when you talk about climate neutral as an organization and what you focus on, it looked like from your amazing website, by the way, it looked like it, it's certain brands that you've really taken a look at to look at their carbon footprint or net zero or reduction of their carbon emissions. How are you guys taking a look at that? What are you looking for? Yeah, that's a good question. So when a brand shows up on our website as certified, it means one single thing. So every company that is certified, every company on which you might see the label, um, they've done three things. All of them have done them exactly the same way, which is first to measure the entirety of that company's carbon emissions. Everything is, that, is that the entire supply chain too? Yeah, yeah. Okay, everything wow. it takes to run the business and also to make and produce and deliver products. So it's cradle to customer emissions. Um, and yeah, it includes kind of modeling all the way up the supply chain from the very kind of beginning of that product's life cycle in its raw material form. Um, so every company has measured their entire corporate carbon inventory or carbon footprint. Um, and then they have reduced that footprint through um, different operational improvements that they commit to. Um, and then lastly, they are compensating for 100% of last year's carbon emissions, the measuring oh, okay. with the purchase of high quality carbon credits. Um, so this is a way to outside your supply chain. So reduction focuses on like, what can we do to optimize our manufacturing processes or our delivery um, mm -hmm. so that we're emitting less carbon emissions yeah. ourselves. The reality is that you really can't make and produce a good or even a service today without emitting carbon. Yeah. Um, and I mean carbon like carbon equivalent. I'm talking about all greenhouse gases. Um, so the 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 last step, which is compensating for emissions, is a way to get companies really to price carbon. Um, so they've committed to pay for 100% of last year's emissions, which changes behaviors within the company. It makes it a lot easier to reduce emissions over time. Uh -huh. It also then removes or reduces emissions outside of the supply chain. The idea being that like you emit a ton of carbon and then you can pay someone somewhere else to remove that ton of carbon by planting trees or by capturing methane from landfill. There are a lot of different project types that remove emissions from the atmosphere. And so that's what uh -huh. you're paying for in that compensation step. Um, okay. So that's kind of the, those are the three steps. And again, like it's a single standard. So everybody has met that single standard by doing those three steps. Um, and, that's and it's validated, right? Like somebody validates yeah. it. You're not taking them at their word. Right. Yeah. So we, yeah. So, so we set the standard through an advisory process once a year. And then our kind of certification operations, like what we do day to day is validate that companies are meeting our standards and then they earn our, our label. Yeah. So then I saw, I was taking a look at, again, at that amazing website, it's, you know, there's a 30 year plans, you know, industry signing up, there's certifications, there's different, you know, country coalitions coming together, but it's not that it, it's not that it's not important in 30 years. It's really important today. So how are some of those some of those different ways that you're coming about of, of paying for last year's? Why is that so important to do like today and right now versus just have it in plan for 30 years from now? Yeah, um, also a great question. Uh, so. Like in 2018, the IPCC, so the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, um, released a special report that said basically we have you know 12 years to 
have global emissions and then we have mm-hmm. to reach global net zero by 2050. Mm-hmm. And this was so that we could keep warming under 1.5 degrees C, which is like a really critical tipping point. It's where mm-hmm. we start to see like the most like really horrifying impacts. Um, so anyways, like in 2018, I think there was this release. There were lots of headlines about like, we have yeah. 12 years to go. And so at that point, there started to be a lot of momentum around companies committing to long-term targets that aligned to the the science-based targets set forth in that report. So have emissions by 2030, get to zero by 2050. Mm -hmm. That's a really easy thing to commit to in 2020, 2021, 2022. Yeah. Because it's it's still kind of a far way into the future. There are lots so of nebulous. It's yeah. a bit nebulous. Yeah. And, and I think like th- what, what it means in 2030 or 2050 looks really different internally at a lot of different companies. And there's very mm-hmm. little accountability or good reporting on like, what is the interim plan to get to a 2030, 50% reduction and zero mm-hmm. by 2050. So what, we're positing with our climate neutral certification standard is that it's a really good interim immediate step to push yeah. you on the pathway to actually achieving 2030 and 2050 goals. Mm-hmm. So um again, like pricing and paying for carbon emissions this year will get you organizationally ready to have actually reduced your emissions by, you know, X percent in 20 each year. Um, so like, um, and then also the credits that you're buying are actually really important investments. So, I mean, achieving net zero is a global target. Yeah. Like from a climate perspective, it doesn't really matter like which organizations reach it. Like it's something we have to do at scale like it's net net emissions holistic yeah yeah um so when you're kind of investing in carbon credits you're investing in climate solutions that exist today so there are things that we know how to do ways to take carbon out of the atmosphere today um Mm -hmm. and so when you're not paying for those credits you're basically leaving climate solutions like without finance Um, Mm -hmm. So anyways, we think that's really important. So first it's like actually start pricing carbon internally. It'll put you on the right path to meet your targets. Second, it's Mm -hmm. like make a real investment today to start chipping away at the global problem. Yeah. Um, And then third, it's, it's about reporting and transparency. So like we do have a requirement that you're talking every year about those interim actions to meet the long-term quantitative targets like it's great to say you're going to have emissions by 2030 yeah but if you don't talk about like the fact that you're going to switch from air transport to sea transport and you don't hold yourself publicly accountable to those commitments like it's really hard to actually meet those targets because you have no idea yeah. how you're gonna meet them. And most companies don't. Like if you actually like get people to tell you the truth, companies have no idea how they're gonna meet yeah. their 2030 and 2050 targets. And so there is like this big elephant in the room, which is like, what's the reliance on carbon credits going to look like in 2030 or 2050 when like these mm-hmm. commitments come due? And now everybody's kind of scrambling, honestly to buy yeah. a large volume of carbon credits to meet those targets. But that will be like wrong because you actually can't reach global net zero by everyone just like buying a bunch of carbon credits. Like yeah. there's not enough like capacity in our soils to sink that much carbon through planting trees. Yeah. It's a good interim step, but it's not like we can't all like arrive in 2050 and offset our way out of the problem. We have to be like kind of taking you have to incrementally do it like you have to what is it you have to like eat the elephant one bite at a time you can't just sit down to eat the elephant yeah yeah that's exactly it yeah yeah so it sounds like you're really trying to change like systemically change the problem and talking with somebody else um her comment we were talking about sustainability and just some sustainability at home and recycling and what are the things that we can do and her point was like that's all super important when you look at the problem like that it's like 
you know, a little sliver, like it's a systemic problem. And if we make systemic changes, then yeah, all of that incrementally all adds up, but that systemic change is really important. Um, so when it comes to like, for some of the com companies and the brands that you have, have they come to you to do this? Or are you guys going out and finding them? How does that work? Cause there are a lot of name brands on there that I recognized. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I love the point about systemic change. I think that's so true. Um, we tell people all the time that like, you know, I mean, making a change in your own life, like deciding not to eat meat is really good and we should all do it probably. But like, if you can recruit your favorite brand to get certified, you suddenly yeah. not like, you know, if you switch from like a plant-based, like a, sorry, a meat intensive diet to plant-based, you might save like five to 10 tons of carbon emissions. If you're yeah. lucky, like that would yeah. be a lot. You'd have to be eating a lot of meat. Um, for your family. That's like, my, that my family level. might count for that. I don't eat meat, but I feel like they make up for it. <laughs> um, but you know, if you recruit your favorite brand to get certified, like, you know, you could, you could be talking about thousands of tons of carbon emissions. Um, yeah. But anyways, yeah. Um, we, uh, in terms of recruitment, uh, I think, um, we're a small nonprofit, so we don't have a lot of, um, we're a team of nine and a half people. Yeah. Um, so we have relied on um, word of mouth marketing um, through our brands and we do enable them to, to do the kind of marketing we need them to do to spread the word, but that it's a product label is really helpful. Like if yeah. you go to REI, you will see it, um, which I think helps. Yeah. Um, but the other thing is like, we just will never have the cumulative market budget that our marketing budget that our brands do. And so we enable them to talk about their certifications program. Mm -hmm. And then they do um, a lot of marketing that has mutual benefit. Like they get to talk about being certified. And then of course yeah. like the certification gets talked about. Um, so we've done very little in terms of like outbound selling to date it's mostly been inbound um but we're always happy to kind of like enable people to recruit their favorite brands yeah um, so uh yeah excited to hear about more companies wanting to certify yeah I think uh like I told you Ian is trying to attend a high school football game tonight but if he was here I'm sure it would be one of the major soccer brands or premier league soccer or something to that effect cool, yeah but I, yeah, but I did notice it was a lot of consumer brands. There was a handful of like professional services and all that, but it was mostly like tangible stuff that, mm -hmm. that is getting certified. Is that kind of where you're targeting? Yeah, well, and I think like it's a it's a consumer label. So it makes most sense on a durable mm -hmm. good where like the consumer yeah. is gonna sit there a minute and like think about their purchase. Mm -hmm. Um that kind of seems to be our sweet, like that's where we have okay. the most market value, I think, like the label itself. Gotcha. Um, but from an impact perspective, I like working with brands that make stuff because that's just always going to be where most of the carbon emissions come from. Okay. Like yeah. it's true that, that, I mean, we've seen a lot of leadership from software companies on corporate mm -hmm climate strategy and they talk about their climate plans a lot and they've done a lot to like be first movers in a lot of um things like direct air capture which is an expensive way to remove carbon from the atmosphere and it's really good that they can do that but the reality is just that like companies that make stuff have a way higher carbon footprint per revenue dollar um yeah. so if you can work with companies making stuff, you're working in the real world, which is where most of the carbon emissions come from. Gotcha. So other question too, around some of those brands, like in the consumer products, the label is great. That's great marketing. A lot of people are really interested in making different choices when they go out and buy things these days. But what are the requirements, like aside from the good feeling, and we all know it's something we need to do, what is like, what does that do for them when it comes to their investors or their shareholders or reporting that they have to do? How important is that as well? Yeah, that's a great question. It's something we've started to see more of for sure in the last couple of years. Um, in terms of like, public investors, there are new guidelines from the SEC that will be finalized in the next couple of months. 
Mm -hmm. Um, And this has to do with how you report your carbon emissions to public investors. And so that will become mandatory, which is exciting. And I think definitely the needle. Um, We have also partnered with um, a software platform called Novata, which is ESG management software for um, private investors. Mm -hmm. And um, our carbon measurement technology is available through that platform so that private companies can report to their investor stakeholders. Um, is that the one that's called B on your website, BEE? Yes, yes, yes. All right, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, the brand emissions estimator. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think what we're seeing from investors is like interest in knowing like any other like thing that investors want to know what their risk is. Mm -hmm. Um, So they want to know total carbon emissions because they see it as a risk, um, which is great. Like it's good that they're thinking that way at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, And there are two kinds of risk really that investors look at with carbon, which is like physical asset risk. So like, is my like building gonna sink because of where yeah. it's like, am I am I in the hurricane zone yeah I'm, I'm coastal yeah and we don't work so much on that one um <laughs> what we do work on is transition risk which is like okay. how, my portfolio of investments like how carbon intensive are they and so when the mm-hmm. economy transitions or maybe regulation is introduced like how exposed am I yeah. um so that's what we look at because we're helping companies to measure their own com- carbon emissions um Mm -hmm. so anyways like that's where investors are they're I wouldn't say like right at the cutting edge of this stuff yeah um but they're starting to be interested like from the top from the SEC um private investors I would say are still trying to figure out the right questions to ask honestly um that being said I have heard from plenty of our certified brands that the certification plays really well, like, especially when you're trying to, um, when you're fundraising. So like, if you can put it in a pitch deck, it's much more appealing because I guess at that point, like the risk, the transition risk that I described is zero because you've zeroed out your carbon emissions, you're taking Mm -hmm. care of them. They're built into your financial projections. So removing a lot of risk for your investor, which is great. Yeah. Um, And it's great to do it early because then it's built into all of your unit costs and you don't have to like ask the investor to start paying for climate and carbon later. Um, Yeah. Be a harder conversation. Um, Yeah. That's a not good surprise. No. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. All right, give me one second. Yes. I'll figure out how to edit this. Can you guide me to Ian Kim's house? Because then he asked me. Um, he I, asked me if I could go to his house. Yes, yes, you can. But can you let me finish it? Uh, yes. Do you want to come say hi? You yeah. don't have to talk. Last time he did this, he was like, I don't know what to say. Wait, hold on, let me unplug hey. my background. This is Isabella. Here, you can put my uh. Here, put it in. You can say hi. Hello. Hello. What's your name? Ian. Ian, it's good to meet you. Yeah. Good to meet you this too. is a pretty cool project. I'm talking to your mom about your sabbatical yeah. year, your travel. It's not working. Oh, here, you can have this one. Right. Can you say that again? Yeah, I'm talking to your mom about your sabbatical year, the travel you all are going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, pretty exciting. It's so pretty exciting. You're pretty lucky. You're helping brand yeah. become climate neutral. Ask her, like, which, how, how do you get, ask her, how do you get your favorite brand? Tell her what it is to become climate carbon um, neutral. Well, my favorite brand is Nike. So how like, would you get them to be carbon, whatever it is? Carbon neutral. Carbon neutral. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, So we would first, like, we have to convince Nike that it's a good idea. Um, So anytime you're kind of interacting with Nike, I don't know if you use probably not so much social media, but maybe when you're a little bit older, you could ask them to become (laughs) certified. (laughs) Um, But then we would have to take a look at everything Nike does to make those sneakers and sweatshirts that you like, because it's not just magic to make a shoe, right? You have to go in. The, like you have to you have to source rubber for the sole which comes from a tree and you have to ship that rubber which emits 
carbon emissions when you kind of transport the rubber and then you have to process the rubber again, which emits carbon emissions. Um, so when you add up all of the carbon emissions it takes to source and transport rubber um, and then turn it into a shoe, you start to really add everything up. So we would help Nike to kind of make sure that they've counted all of their emissions completely. Um, um, and then they would be responsible for paying to clean up those emissions, both making a plan to be better about turning rubber into shoes, being more efficient, but also kind of um, paying to take care of the emissions that they already uh, put into the atmosphere through making shoes historically. Yeah. Does that make sense to your question? <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. We'll figure it out on social media. Yeah. Okay, we'll give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> now like he totally sidetracked me up so I forgot what I was going to ask but um oh I know the one other thing I was going to ask is like and taking a look at the 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 B capability that you have helping a brand take a look at what um its carbon footprint is like as a consumer is there an equivalent tool out yeah. there where I can just figure out what what my own carbon footprint is yeah it's pretty it's bad, like, I'm guessing. At so. the top, when I was like, I'd love to connect you to other folks. Um, yes, there are people working on this personal carbon calculators. And it's like exactly where our calculator stops because it's yeah. basically to the point of sale. And then once you go home and you start washing the t shirt or, you know, yeah, um, you do with products like that. Because my air conditioned are, home with like all the lights exactly. on. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I mean, there are a couple of different like good options for this. Okay. Um, there's an app that we like to recommend called Joro, J-O-R-O. -O, and I could definitely okay. connect you to someone on the Joro team. If you're pulling carbon data from different places, you have to aggregate it somewhere, um, which you could do in a spreadsheet for sure. Um, yeah. So it just depends on like what your kind of accounting preference is, but definitely lots of options for it. I mean, automated, always outsourced, definitely. So if someone else can help me figure it out. It's probably going to get me to a better answer than if I have to do it. Cool. Well, thanks for taking time to talk to me today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm like totally inspired by this project and 